Hello, Donald. Catch me. Where am I? Mathematic land. Mathematic land? Never heard of it. It's the land of great adventure. Now, who are you? I'm a spirit. The true spirit of adventure. Catch for me. What's next? A journey through the wonderland of mathematics. Mathematics? That's for all kids. Eggheads? Now hold on, Donald. You like music, don't you? Yeah. Well, without eggheads, there would be no music. Uh. Come on. Let's go to ancient Greece. To the time of Pythagoras, the master egghead of them all. Pythagoras? The father of mathematics and music. Mathematics and music? Ah, you'll find mathematics in the darndest places. Watch. First, we'll need a string. Stretch it good and tight. Plunk it. Now divide in half. Plunk again. You see? It's the same tone, one octave higher. Now divide the next section. And the next. Pythagoras discovered the octave had a ratio of two to one. With simple fractions, he got this. And from this harmony in numbers developed the musical scale of today. By God, you do find mathematics in the darkest places. You can imagine how excited Pythagoras was when he shared his findings with his pals, a fraternity of eggheads known as the Pythagoreans. They used to meet in secret to discuss their mathematical discoveries. Only members were allowed to attend. They had a secret emblem, the pentagram. Let's see what the topic is for today. It was our old friend Pythagoras who discovered that the pentagram was full of mathematic. The two shorter lines combined exactly equal the third. And this line shows the magic proportions of the famous golden section. The second and third lines exactly equal the fourth. Once again, we have the golden section. But this is only the beginning. Hidden within the pentagram is a secret for creating a golden rectangle, which the Greeks admired for its beautiful proportions and magic qualities. The star contains the golden rectangle many times over. It's a most remarkable shape. It can mathematically reproduce itself indefinitely. All these rectangles have exactly the same proportions. This figure also contains a magic spiral that repeats the proportions of the golden section into infinity. To the Greeks, the golden rectangle represented a mathematical law of beauty. We find it in their classical architecture. The Parthenon, perhaps one of the most famous of early Greek buildings, contains many golden rectangles. The 
These same golden proportions are also found in their sculpture. In the centuries that followed, the golden rectangle dominated the idea of beauty in architecture throughout the Western world. The Cathedral of Notre Dame is an outstanding example. The Renaissance painters knew this secret well. Today, the golden rectangle is very much a part of our modern world. Modern painters have rediscovered the magic of these proportions. Indeed, this ideal proportion is to be found in life itself. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is not magic. I got nice when you do figures like that. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, Donald. Get me to iron it. No, no. Ideal proportion. Not quite. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. No, I'm afraid not. Well, we can't all be mathematically perfect. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I do like to do it. Now that you're all pent up in a pentagon, let's see how nature uses this same mathematical form, the petunia. The star jasmine. The starfish. The wax flower. There are literally thousands of members in good standing in nature's Pythagorean society of the star. All nature's works have a mathematical logic and her patterns are limitless. The magic proportions of the golden section are often found in the spirals of nature's designs. The profusion of mathematical forms brings to mind the words of Pythagoras. Everything is arranged according to number and mathematical shape. Yes, there is mathematics in music, in art, in just about everything. And as the Greeks had guessed, the rules are always the same. Well, Donald, did you enjoy your geometrical journey? Gee, Mr. Spirit, guess you're not more to mathematics than two times two. That's right, Donald, and you can find mathematics in games, too. Games? Oh, boy. Let's begin with a game that's played on squares. Checkers? No, chess. Chess? A mathematical contest between two minds. It's a game that has been enjoyed for centuries by kings and commoners. In fact, Lewis Carroll, a famous mathematician with a literary mind, used chess as a setting for his classic tale, Through the Looking Glass. Alice found herself face to face with a none too friendly group of chess pieces. Good heavens, what's this? Upon my soul, it appears to be a lost pawn. I'm your pawn, I'm Donald Duck. He says he's Donald Duck. Pre Posterous. Or it could be an Alice. Alice! 
No, no, no. It's a lost pawn. Lost pawn? Stop that pawn! Muscle <laughs> spirit! Now you can look at this game from a safer perspective. Chess is a game of calculated strategy, and since the board is geometrical, the moves are mathematical. Is over. That's very interesting. What's next? Practically all games are played on geometrical areas. Think of a pentagram, Donald. Now put another inside, a third, and a fourth. No pencil is sharp enough to draw as fine as you can think, and no paper large enough to hold your imagination. In fact, it is only in the mind that we can conceive infinity. Mathematical thinking has opened the doors to the exciting adventures of science. I'm a door door. I've never seen so many doors before. Each discovery leads to many others. An endless chain. Hey, hey. What's the matter with these doors? Hey, these doors won't open. Get out. Of course they are locked. These are the doors of the future, and the key is... Mathematics! Right. Mathematics. The boundless treasures of science are locked behind those doors. In time, they will be opened by the curious and inquiring minds of future generations. In the words of Galileo, mathematics is the alphabet with which God has written the universe. Yeah.